Shout out to Qualcomm for sponsoring this video. Sarah DG Rhymes with Peachy here. Hi, hello, how are ya? We have another 24 hour challenge today. Get ready. Have you heard of the no code movement? It's taking over. People are now building websites and apps without having to learn code. Tech stacks are moving away from a collection of programming languages to now a collection of services, apps, and APIs. So in today's video, I'm going to build a startup in only 24 hours using only no code tools. As a previous disgruntled computer science college major who dropped out after a couple years, this is very exciting for me. And then also as a creator, I feel like I'm always running into problems day to day that I can solve through a business, whether it's an app, a web app or whatever, but I always run into a roadblock because well, I can't code. So I'm excited for this one, but it might be a little bit harder than my previous challenge learning Blender. And hey, when you're a creative professional, having technology that you can count on goes a long way. Shout out to this video's sponsor, Qualcomm Technologies. Qualcomm powers some of the most high-end phones on the market. Some of my favorites, well, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, the Galaxy S22 family, and the latest Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 and Fold 4. I have those here with me and well, I just love them so. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is their premium tier powerhouse that features Wi-Fi 6E, has up to 30% better CPU and GPU power efficiency than its predecessor, and their seventh gen Qualcomm AI engine that enables powerful camera features like new beautiful bokeh and 8K HDR video. That's just the highlights, a little bit more about them later. So all of this started with me wanting to give coding another try. After hours of researching different coding stacks, what I would need to learn to build a web app, well, one, I got very overwhelmed, but two, I started learning about no code tools like Webflow and Bubble. So this really intrigued me. I've always wanted to learn Webflow because that is what Lab22's website was built on, and I wanna be able to manage that on my own. There's just a ton of possibilities you can do with it. But it gets tricky once you want to introduce user profiles with features like being able to message each other. So I was kind of going in between those two, but now enter Twitter, my own personal brain trust of smart humans. Seriously, if you interact with me on there, thank you. It's so incredibly helpful when I have questions about learning something new. So I simply just asked on there, are there any startups out there building with no code tools and what are they using? And people kept going back to Bubble. It's a website you can use to build web apps with built-in functionality for users. I'll give you an example real quick on why it's so powerful. When you enter Bubble.io, it's just a blank case canvas, the world is your oyster, but that's also what makes it kind of intimidating. But when you're building a web app with users, you need them to sign up. And Bubble has something called a sign up element template where you can drag and drop onto your website and all of the actions needed to store a new user is automatically set up. So this was my first fun challenge. I wanted to customize the sign up process so that when you press the sign up button, the form would be on a pop-up over the homepage page, like how the website Fiverr does it, instead of it just being static on a web page. And just this one simple task led me down a rabbit hole. This is reminiscent of like doing programming homework late at night and being like, why isn't this working? And having that aha moment of, oh, so instead of going back to the homepage, it needs to just get rid of the pop-up because we're already on the homepage. Oh, element action, hide, pop-up A. Oh, genius. That only took, what, 20 minutes to figure out? Let's see if it works. That was only an hour and five minutes of work and I was so tired. 
So when the sign up button is clicked, well, sign the user up, which means you're taking the value from the email input and storing it in the user database. And after they hit sign up, you wanna hide the sign up pop-up window. And if you double click on the button element and go over to the conditional tab, you can add a condition of when the current user is logged in, the text changes to log out so that the user can use that same button to log out when logged in. Did that make sense? Anyone? Ah, it's so cool. Okay, so for some of you guys, you're probably like, Sarah, you've lost me. And honestly, that's okay, I understand. Check out that Qualcomm link in the description below. Thanks for sponsoring. Smash that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. But for the rest of you, are you feeling the same excitement that I am? The side of my brain that is obsessed with problem solving is absolutely on fire. This is triggering the same thing that initially got me into coding, but it's quicker. And well, it's a heck of a lot easier than learning an entire coding language. Or even before that, understanding the different languages that you need to even build something like this. Cause you can't just learn one language and you're good to go. But okay, we need to back up a little bit because what the heck am I even building? It's going to be a marketplace where students can instantly book tutors to teach them how to learn creative programs like Blender and Resolve over a video call. There are services out there already kind of like this. So you have Wisent for tutoring and then something even more similar is intro.co. But that site is kind of just like Cameo on steroids. It's like you're booking for a super expensive FaceTime disguised as consulting, which honestly can totally work in certain scenarios. But I just want a place where both the student and the tutor show up with their laptops. They show up with questions and you're just really able to dig into your problems. And I look for something like this after having a awesome Zoom tutor session with Arturo who helped me learn Blender on the last video. I was able to ask him about all of the problems I was having and he literally took over my mouse and keyboard and solved all of them. And what would take me probably a day of Googling, an expert solved in only an hour. Now, this really started as only a project for this YouTube video for another 24 hour challenge. But as you can tell, as I'm like, saying these things, I'm kind of getting pumped up. I'm kind of passionate about this. So if I can actually make this a real thing and I have time to maintain it, maybe it can be a real thing. I don't know. But the goal for the end of this video is to have a fully functioning website and hopefully it works for at least a few days. So let's actually get into the weeds. Figuring out the basics of Bubble took an initial couple hours of YouTube tutorials and most importantly, a tutoring session with a Bubble expert. I know, this is all becoming very meta, isn't it? This is Garrett. I met him on Twitter and his startup is literally building pipes underground to achieve 30 second deliveries. I know kind of crazy. But he also builds random things like Factal, which is a fun Wordle-like web game. It's built on Bubble. I already have a few hours clocked for the 24 hour challenge. So I have a ton of questions for Garrett. You know, is there a way where I can just, how do I automatically get the padding? Is that just what you have to do? Yeah. Where was that? Was that a container? Can you do that like after the fact? Have I not that? So is already there? Is that wrong? Should the, the tutor session from Garrett was so helpful. What's so cool about this no code movement. I mean, it's everywhere. The people in it are so supportive. Like you you tweet out for help and they're there. And that's what I found and it's amazing. Thomas Frank linked me to a super talented and helpful dude. His name is Matt. Um, he does a lot of cool stuff in Bubble and we exchanged a few tweets and I was like, hey, do you wanna hop on a, hop on a Zoom? He really helped me and we talked through it and uh, we did it a couple different ways and it didn't work out, but he straight up just did the initial calendar feature. There is kind of a steep learning curve with this. Uh, there were lows. What the f It just like erased everything. But hey, there were highs. Oh, that feels good. So this isn't just about me building the web app, but it's also about, well, the title, building an actual startup in only 24 hours. So we need a name. We need branding. My first choice was Office Hour. 
I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. Office hour, right? Book a one hour tutoring session. But of course that was taking. I went through a ton of options. There are no URLs left. Do you know that? They're all taken. So after an hour of going through all these different names, I realized that I just gotta pick something. Probably one of the biggest benefits from doing this in a challenge format is you have to just make the thing. You can't focus on sometimes the things that you get distracted with. So I settled on creativetutor.com co because the dot com wants a ton of money and honestly who cares dot co so we got the name got the url and maybe learning design will be my next 24 hour challenge but for now 99 designs to the rescue for a logo okay everyone it is time to pick the logo let's see i added a few pieces of feedback okay we got 189 entries that is insane okay so now i'm gonna add the design so this logo came in in the final two hours and this is what I'm gonna go with. I did a poll on Twitter with my YouTube friends and they weren't crazy about any of them, <laughs> but they said, okay, if you're going for startup e vibe, this is definitely the best one. So the original is here. And as you can see, like the alignment, there's like no symmetry, which is weird. And I wanted like a, like a standalone logo as well. So we basically, he did some of those changes. So now we have the options of, see the symmetry looks better. We have this option and then we have standalone option, sent him this blue, but that's too much like Lab 22, but I like it, I like it. Okay, yay. We have designs, just sign the document. Now that I have some branding, I was able to make the header of the website. It adds a little spice, right? I know the homepage doesn't look like a lot, but it's where I learned a lot of the bubble basics, like a repeating group, how to make reusable elements, like the header that's gonna go probably on every page, the workflow tab where you make your elements actually do something. Like if someone clicks the Creative Tutor logo on the header, it takes you back to the homepage. And also other things like adding plugins, adding styles, but again, I can't focus on style and font and colors right now, even though I want to, but we're kind of running out of time. So some things I just have to compromise on. I want the entire homepage to have more content. I want the skills under the tutor's names to be prettier. And I would love the entire profile page to honestly just look different. So this is the profile page. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but at this point I have spent hours and hours and hours on it. We are now at hour 12. We are now halfway through the challenge, halfway through this challenge and I still haven't built the main product yet. How are people gonna book these tutors? Okay, so I'm gonna take a break, go freak out a little bit. This has been a lot. And also I have to go get married in France. So I'll be right back. Okay, currently in Paris, had to take a break. Learning a new skill is tough, right? But we're out here riding the bikes and well, we just got married. Woo! Woo! <laughs> but speaking of this, hey Qualcomm, thanks for sponsoring this video. Since the most of this video is me sitting in front of my computer with no makeup, I thought, hey, let's change it up a bit. Look, I'm outside. When creating something from nothing, having the right technology can make a huge difference. That's where our sponsor comes in. Thank you so much, Qualcomm, for sponsoring. And making phones like the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 so cool. At the center of the phone is the latest and greatest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. The Samsung Flip and Fold have been my absolute favorite in the past couple years when it comes to a really innovative design. Honestly, if you told me a few years ago we would have flown loans. <laughs> we would have phones with folding displays, I would say no way. Qualcomm's relationship with Samsung is stronger than ever. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is powering the Z Flip 4 and the Fold 4 globally. What does this mean? Well, a few things. When it comes to gaming, it is absolutely unmatched thanks to the Snapdragon Elite Gaming. The device does not skip a beat, and look at this huge display on the Z Fold 4. The 7th Gen Qualcomm AI engine provides amazing professional camera features like next level bokeh, fantastic depth of field, and 8K HDR video recording. You also have super fast and reliable Wi-Fi 6E and just an all around super reliable connection. And actually when I got to France, I had a lot of issues with my eSIM. So I'm glad I put my second personal SIM in the Z Flip 4 because it came in clutch. I had no issues with my signal whatsoever. And we can't forget the battery life. It has been greatly improved due to the CPU and GPU being much more power efficient. That power 
power efficiency has increased up to 30% over its predecessor. So if you want to learn more for yourself, you can check out my link in the description below. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 mobile platform is powering so many amazing flagship phones. From the Asus ROG, OnePlus, Lenovo, Xiaomi, Oppo, and of course Samsung, just to name a few. And Qualcomm is of course always innovating, so stay tuned because in the next month or so, they have some more exciting announcements coming out. Okay, Qualcomm Technologies, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and making really cool devices like this that empower creators to just create and make cool stuff. Speaking of making cool stuff, I have had a 10 day break from Creative Tutor, from building a startup in only 24 hours. Oh gosh, and outside is getting a little chilly. This is why I stay inside. You don't have to deal with the elements, right? I'm stalling, Sarah, you're stalling. Okay, let's get back to it. So a lot has happened since we last chatted. I started uh, just researching plugins and, um, and it just led me down a rabbit hole. Judy is very excited about this video too. He, he thinks I'm talking to him. Judy, can you let me finish? So this is kind of tough. Um, it took me a while to settle on a plugin. And then once I found a plugin, I like to be honest, I was so confused. When it comes to no code tools, just because there's not any traditional programming doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. This plugin was a calendar plugin for the bookings. It was so confusing on how to do it. I think I kind of landed on it where you basically opened up all of their examples within the bubble editor, but you weren't in your project. So you had to copy with the workflows, paste with the workflows and yours. And I could just never get it to work. I, I didn't understand it. Honestly, I was like, I have to I have to lie about this. I, I can't put this towards my 24 hours because it, it's gotten me absolutely nowhere and it's kind of embarrassing. Blender was hard in 24 hours, but it was doable and I did it. Is what I'm doing now even doable? As of right now, I actually don't think it is. Okay, everyone, I know this is going to be shocking because I was, I was staring myself in the mirror being like, Sarah, are you really going to do this? Are you going to give up? I don't see it as giving up. We are making a huge pivot. It's hour 16. I just got so much help from Matt. He built out the hardest part of the calendar functionality for me. Moments like this is honestly why I kind of want Creative Tutor to work because I want to scale what I have on Twitter, right? Connecting with people, one-on-one -on -one teaching. But as I was sitting there looking at the calendar functionality, I was very overwhelmed. I was breaking each element down in the page and I was looking at the workflows and seeing what was happening. And I was about 30 minutes into it and I still hadn't fully understood what he did and I was like, Oh. If it's gonna take you more than an hour to figure out how to put this calendar availability for students to see and the realization of what I had just spent, you know, the first 16 hours on, I was like, oh, there's no way that I'm gonna get this done in time. And I start tweeting again about my experience and someone said, hey, if you're doing a marketplace, you should check out another no-code tool called ShareTribe. And they literally only exist for marketplaces. So Bubble is kind of like a free-for-all. You can really do whatever you want. ShareTribe is specifically for marketplaces and have even more functionality built on top. People can message each other, payments, already built-in calendar features. However, what I will say as I began to explore this to see if it's even an option, I very quickly realized that, okay, with those built-in features, you are losing so much flexibility. I don't consider myself a designer at all, but I liked already how things were looking and I love the freedom to just say, hey, I want this button over here. So as I explore ShareTribe, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna lose so much functionality. I don't know if I can do this. Matt spent so much time with me explaining these things, but it is going to take me a very long time to really understand the ins and outs of Bubble. And still, 
some of the main functionality being so far away on the Bubble website, I have to build an MVP for my MVP. Enter ShareTribe. So what's crazy about ShareTribe is they don't even have different looking templates like a Squarespace would have. You literally just input all the information, a cover photo, some copy, different user fields, and that's about it. It puts all of your information in the same exact layout as everyone else. So the creative side of my brain is honestly kind of dying on the inside. They have a more complex version of ShareTribe, but you have to be a developer in order to use it. So as I'm just begrudgingly kind of entering things and setting things up, and it's pretty easy by the way, I'm getting a fully functional marketplace ready in only two to three hours compared to the over 10 hours in Bubble and all I really have is one version of the profile page and a home page. So I'm telling my myself in the back of my head, Sarah, you just need this to validate the idea. The entire point of this is making something that is useful for people, connecting a tutor and a student. That is the entire point, right? Not all the bells and whistles in the beginning. And I think that's what these challenges are reminding me and hopefully reminding you is just starting, executing, getting something out there, whether it's making a YouTube video or building an entire company, a startup, a product, a business of any kind. Starting is important, but the execution part, just finishing it, getting it across the finish line to see if it's useful to people, to see if it solves a problem is is the most important part. So even though it's not exactly what I envisioned at the start of this experiment, well, perfection was never my goal. And why I think sometimes putting your creativity into a time box is helpful, well, look at Parkinson's Law. It's usually true in my life. It says the time that you allot for a task, well, that task, whether it's work or a personal task, usually fills up the amount of time you give it. Uh, in the next five days, I'm gonna clean out my garage. Well, then yeah, it'll probably take you five days instead of gosh darn it right now, I'm gonna give myself two hours. And I think that really goes a long way with creative work. So while I was giving you that inspirational speech without you noticing, I completed the project. <laughs> Okay, sorry for the dramatic music, but it is here and look, we have tutors. Oh my gosh, we have Arturo who taught me Blender in the first 24 hours video. He is so talented. We got Patrick, if you guys follow his channel, he is an expert in Resolve and Fusion. If you wanna get into video FX, in DaVinci Resolve, he is your guy. And then we got Ian. He takes rumors of technology that's about to come out, like new phones and tech, and makes it in Blender so you can visualize what it's gonna look like. So good, we have so much talent. And of course, I had to uh, get in on the fun. So you can actually sign up to either be a student or a tutor. You have to go through a little bit of a process to be a tutor. And I'm trying to get more tutors up there in the lower price points. So there's a good variety, but the tutors that we have now are the best of the best. And hey, you can book them today. Oh, this is exciting. Cause hey, I know this is how I learn. Uh, having someone one-on-one, -on -one, I can just ask questions to. I think that's why apprenticeships can be so powerful and so many of the photo video things that I've learned throughout my uh, life, my career, whatever you wanna call it, I had those people in my life that I could ask questions to. So hopefully this is like a scalable solution to that, right? Um, so yeah, I'll link it in the description below and you guys can let me know. It'll be exciting to see if some of you guys sign up and you can keep up with it. And this is just another 24 hour challenge in the books, even though I'm still working on the Bubble website behind the scenes, I'm so grateful for all of the knowledge that I learned because again, as someone who has so many ideas, that platform is going to enable me to just make stuff, create stuff. And even if I need some no code programmer like people to help me out, I'll be able to go into that tool, tweak things when needed because I understand it. Knowing enough to be dangerous. That's, that's the new theme of my life. And it helps me move forward creatively, confidently, because it makes me feel like I have no limit. You know, okay, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. It's almost like I'm giving myself a pep talk, like finish, finish this, Sarah, finish that bubble website, right? Whew, okay, 
So I think this combo of no code tools and AI creative tools is coming faster than we think. And there are some aspects that maybe you could be scared about, right? But I think the big positive part is it's gonna save us a ton of time on the grunt work. So we can actually focus on, hey, how do I make this look better? How do I make this better to the end user? And maybe we'll spend, you know, several less hours trying to figure out if like why a certain line of code is crashing everything. I think what matters the most now is distribution. So if you're a YouTuber watching this, who? You got the distribution and hey, guess what? Now you have the tools to build your own thing. What are you gonna do with that power? That's actually, that's that's huge. Your project either has to be like so unique or so thought out, just so amazing. Or again, it just solves a simple problem. You have the distribution uh, and kind of everything in the middle is just gonna kind of fall to the wayside. I feel like I could write a whole paper about this, to be honest. Uh, I'm just gonna tweet storm into the night but hopefully in an effort of making this video under 30 minutes, I'm gonna sign off. And also thank you so much Qualcomm for sponsoring this video and also being patient with me. These videos always take longer than I think. Uh, so these 24 hours spanned across three weeks, which was actually shorter than my blender that took me a full four weeks to do. So thank you for being patient. And also as I'm posting this video, they are announcing some pretty cool things. So you should follow them on the social media, keep up to date. And well, let me know what you thought about this. I'm gonna need to rest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to have some time in between this 24 hour challenge and the next. You can make your suggestions down below for the next one. And until next time, everyone, well, stay peachy and like. Give this video a like. It helps boost things. Subscribe. Stay peachy. Okay, have I already said that? I'm tired. Bye.